and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at using the M5 Stamp C3 RGB LED and getting it to flash. Start off with a blank, blank location. Here we are, we're on my hard drive at the users.tech and what we're going to do, we're going to go into the stamp c3 subdirectory and uh, next we are going to copy the getting started sample project that comes with the idf and we're going to call it do it on lowercase rgb flasher flasher so we'll do that so let's copy it in quick look there we have it rgb flasher and we have some things here right what we need to look at next i'm just going to pause right having loaded and copied over the uh, sample program into the rgb flasher we want to use led string and that's part of the idf component manager and if we can you can go down here and we can look at what components they have so we click on that we can see that you come down we can select the c3 and then here is a whole list of what components there are to make our life easy and if we go back up and we can put in led strip and there we find they have a component called led strip and if we click on it it tells us how we need to add this so all we have to do is copy that go back into our flasher put it in and then hit return and it will go away and do something so that gives us that's then set up and what it's created is it's created this idf component.yaml and it will also create some other files and what we find now is if we just do the idf.py build when we come when it finishes we should find that it's pulled in some extra directories so we'll let it go it might take it a little bit eventually it will get there there's no point fast forwarding this it's not taking too long well it will but it shouldn't take too long because it's, it's an empty file build should be really quick all i want to do is i want to see if it's imported the dependencies and the files required to run the LED strip and I thought well if I'm just building a, a blank main it shouldn't take mega long to do but uh, it's it's uh, a bit slow so maybe I will speed this one up and sing a bit I don't understand why it brings in so many parts of the system that you're not going to use it's just filling up my direct my hard drive with lots and lots of copies of the same thing slowly getting there of course your main your machine may do this faster or slower <laughs> i think mine's getting a bit long in the tooth Let's have a quick look and uh, see if the directors have changed. And it has. Now you'll see we've pulled in another directory called managed components. If we go and look in there, we 
we have an expressive LED strip. So, good to go. So if we go back out of that, and we go into main success, we have the LED flasher components installed. So now we can use them. Right, so now we're going to start building on what we need. We're going to use the free toss, which is the free real time operating system. So we need to install the free RTOS and the free RTOS task driver. We're going to be using the, the GPIO. So we need to load in the driver for the GPIO. Again, we might use the ESP logging function so that we can send data out and highlight what we're doing. We're going to need to use the LED strip and we'll include the SDK config just to be on the safe side. So just to save me having to type all that in and you to watch, I'm going to paste it in just to make life a little easier. And then of course, we're gonna wanna put our constant in again for the log file. So we'll bring that in and we'll call it RGB flasher. So every time we send out using the log program, it will default to saying RGB flasher. So that's what we want in. And we want to define the IO we're going to use. So I'm just going to pull bits in from another program just to save having to type it all in and just modify it. So we're going to call this one RGB and we're going to use the one from the header file. Again, just to save time, I'm going to cut and paste them in. But basically, if you go back via the GPIO.h and follow the header files in there, you'll come to a directory that shows you what the GPIO underscore num underscore two, what that actually means but it basically just programs it to port two and it gives you a nice written version of what it is. So what do we want to do next? Uh, we want to have a blink period, don't we? So we want to know how fast or how short we're going to stop. So we just want to define the, define the blink period. So we'll stick one of them in. Oh, don't want to stick it there, do we? We'll do it this way. Not only does it make life easier, less typing, but uh, it uh, saves me having to do all the spelling mistakes. <laughs> Right, and to use the LED strip, we need to set up a handle and we'll call the handle LED. No, we just call the, what should we call it? We'll call it LED RGB, as there is only one of them. And then going on from an example and looking at the headers, then you get, they tell you how to build it up. So this is how we're going to build it up. Log I tag, you know, and it's an example configured to blink the addressable LED. So that's what we're going to do. And in here, there are various things that you need to set, like the number of LEDs and the IO. Then we move on down. I'm going to space these out a bit. It's easier to read. Then there's the LED strip RMT config underscore T. That's a type. And we create that type and we're going to call it RMT config underscore config. And basically in that, we're going to set the resolution in Hertz, basically how fast I think it talks to it. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to create the new device. We're going to pass it in the handle. We're going to pass it in the, the config, the address of the LED strip, which we might have to change that to being RGB because we've changed that. And again, we're going to have to change that to RGB. Is there any more LED strips? No, that's okay. That's how we configure it. As, we, as I showed earlier when we were looking at the files. So the next thing is we want to be able to blink it. So we'll chuck this in. So we have an LED state. Oh no, we haven't put that in, have we? We didn't put that one in. So we'll have an LED state. So I better go back and fit in an LED state. And we'll look at doing free color. We'll look at doing more color changes maybe in the next one. So I'll just stick that in there. So it starts at state zero. And so basically we're going to set the pixel and we're going to change that to RGB. We're going to change that to RGB. RGB. And what we're going to do here is a bit of programming here. We just need 
if we remove if we cut that one out and put it there because we only really, really need to call that once oops not reg b and then we can delete that one so basically <clears throat> if the state is a one we'll say it uh, whether that's red else we'll set it to the other color and then when we finish we will refresh it and the refresh is the command that sends it out so that starts the data stream so that's that done and then that brings us down to our uh, main program and the first thing we need to do is we need to configure the LED port and set it up so that's we're going to call that so that will call our configure routine and you only want to do it once so then again we need to have a loop statement so we could say while true so it will always loop and we'll put we'll do what we did last time we'll have a a little one so that we can see if the led is flashing by looking at the monitor then we need to call the routine so we'll call the routine as we explained before we need to increment or invert the state of the led so it was on it was off it's off it's on and then we need to go into the blink period and i need one of them or did i put one up there i just got and check oh no blink period did it 500 milliseconds let's make that a thousand so that's done so that's probably all we need to do now so it's just a matter of saving it right we're just looking back at our main.c that we wrote to do the flashing of the uh, rgb led and this is the header that we've called up led strip dot h and we've used commands like uh, set pixel refresh now if we go into led strip dot h and come down you can find we have an led strip set pixel and it tells you that we need the handle to the strip we need the index to the led in the string we need the colors red green and blue and up here it tells you in the parameters the led strip index of the pixel red part green part blue part it will also handle rgbw if they're addressable and i think that just adds the white component on the end after you've updated the colors with the ones above you need to cause the api to flush the colors to the strip and that's what we do when we do the refresh that fires the colors off and the data to the chip and then the clear the clear just fires the uh, zeros at it to clear all the leds and i suppose if you want to stop using the resource at the end of your program or you did it for some reason and then you no longer want it you can do the led strip delete which will re delete all the resources but as my program is only using the resources there is no point when i need to delete it but you'll also if we go back up find that this one calls it calls the led strip rmt.h and if we look at the led rmt.h this defines the structure of the what the is the strip and how we're going to use things like with the flags and that and then it tells us you know how to create the device and it tells you here we need the strip configuration and we need the rmt specific configuration which is this one here and we need the strip handle but you'll also notice that it includes led strip types and if we go up to that now this is a really useful one because this tells us what command what data we can use so when it asks for the leg led type well then you got rgb grb and grbw for white so the two formats it knows and you can also tell it what module i'm not sure what the default one is because we that's the one that we're using it creates a structure for the uh, leds and then down here you can see that the structure we fill in the gpi number how many leds it is but what we didn't do in our simple program is we didn't update the pixel format 
So we've obviously gone for the default one. And it's the same for the LED module or LED mode. We've done the default one for that because there is a mode where you can change how it sends RGB. And so that's it. That's all you need to know on how to assemble it all and build it all and put it into here. So I hope that makes things a little clearer. And popping back to our window and we can do the IDF dot by dash p com six flash so if it actually compiles it will flash and then i'll set the board into the state where it can receive the data if it compiles i'll then show you a video of that happening and off we go and i'll fast forward this because it is boring Oh, fouled. Ah, oh. did you see this? A fatal error occurred. This chip is not. Well, sorry, this chip is a C, a C3, not an ESP2. And that, folks, is because no one reminded me that when it comes to flashing and things like that, we need to tell it what the target is. So, let's set the target. What I need to do is create a crib sheet that says X copy sample project to here and how to install the, um, the dependencies and things like that. Right, so that's now done. So now we should be able to flash it properly. So back again. Might be quicker this time because some of it might have already been pre-compiled or it might have to go through the whole lot seeing as we've changed the chip. Right, and uh, I'll just hit the reset button, and there we go. One second red, one second blue. So that shows you how to set up and run, well, set up, write, run, build, download, everything that you need. So please leave in the comments if you'd like to see more videos of this style using the IDF and Notepad++ and a lot of typing to uh, sort out you know how to program these as i quite like this view this way it's kind of old school makes you think more about what you're doing rather than just clicking buttons on an ide so uh yep yeah, if you like it give me a thumbs up click subscribe and comment please please comment do you like it do you not like it is there anything you want to see but, uh, i can't promise i can do everything that you ask but we'll try so now I've got to think of some more bits to do with this collaboration with Adam Bryant. So uh, a bit more work to do. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you on the next one.